Hi everyone, here's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this video is going to be all about Equipment 2.0 that came out last week in Update 110. There's a whole host of new pieces of equipment which actually provides competition for your three precious equipment slots as you reach the mid tiers and the higher tiers. I spent a lot of credits, as I expect many of you have, in the last week trying to put new equipment on all of my different tanks. And while I'm hoping that Wargaming are going to put an equipment sale out soon, I bet you they're thinking how long they can try and squeeze us for while we're buying these things at full price. So today, I'm going to be letting you know all of my experiences over the last week with the new equipment and giving you my top tips for which ones I think work, which ones I think don't, and maybe a few little funky setups for some of your tanks that you can try out. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is to just look at each of the pieces of equipment individually. I'm going to give you my initial opinions on them and let you know about if I think that they're going to, which kinds of tanks they're going to work out for. All right, so first let's talk about the improved radio set. What this piece of equipment does is it will keep your opponents lit up for longer once you've spotted them and it will also mean that you are spotted for a shorter amount of time if you are spotted by your enemy so this equipment is is great for a light tank or possibly some medium tanks i guess you could squeeze on a tank destroy if you absolutely utterly wanted to be able to spot that light tank for slightly longer to be able to get that magical long range shot on them as you're running away but really i think there are better pieces of equipment for, for all of the tanks, even for your light tanks. I can't really imagine myself using one of these. Although I expect there would be some kind of funky setup you could use with this if you combine it with Designated Target, which is a gunner perk which does exactly the same thing as this. All in all, I probably can't see myself using this on many, if any, of my tanks, apart from if I'm trying to make some special kind of setup. All right, so now the Commander's Vision System. This is another new piece of equipment. This one's actually incredibly powerful. I said that this thing was going to be overpowered in the lead up to the release of 2.0. And yes, I think it is. I have been able to spot tanks pretty much at max distance, irrelevant of what kind of camo that they have. If you use if you use it with the other coated optics and combine it with vents, probably a premium consumable, things like situational awareness and recon on your command and brothers in arms, which all inflate your view range up. This thing reduces the amount of concealment that your opponents have when they're moving by up to 12.5% if you put it in a vision slot, and also enemies that are trying to hide behind bushes, trees, by 20%. That is massive. As I showed in the video from a couple of weeks ago saying that this thing is broken, this, this commander's vision system is absolutely ridiculous, you can pretty much spot heavy tanks, large vehicles through hundreds of meters of bushes. They have got no opportunity to hide on a map like Prokhorovka, for example, or Malinovka. That makes this thing just absolutely incredible for a light tank. I probably wouldn't use it on a medium tank because this one, I think to really be effective, has to be put inside that spotting slot, the special slot, the, the scouting slot that your light tanks will have. I've been putting this on vehicles like the Sheridan, the Rheimatal Panzerwagen, and especially on the T100LT, and I might even consider using this thing on the EBR to just really keep my opponents lit up at long range. This thing on an EBR is absolutely amazing because it counters for the fact that the EBR has actually had reduced view range, that Wargaming wanted to nerf all of the wheeled light tanks. But effectively, let's say your opponents, let's say you've got 500 meters view range. How far are you going to spot somebody who's got 25% camo rating? Well, if they've got 25% camo rating, they'll reduce your 500 by 125. 375 meters, you will spot that opponent. However, if you use this piece of equipment, then their concealment, if they're moving, not if they're stationary, is going to get reduced from that 25% down to 12.5%. Not 100% sure about whether it's like an absolute value. I'm, I, it could be a tiny little, it could be a relative value. I, it could reduce 100% camo down to, I guess, 87.5. But from my experience, I really feel that it's actually a flat reduction. So 25% base camo will go down to 12.5%. And then you're going to be spotting that tank with your 500 meters view range that had that 25% camo at uh, like 400 and like 30 meters. 430 meters you're going to be seeing them instead. That's massive. So on a vehicle, 
like a light tank, when you're trying to spot mediums and when you're spotting lights, you're pretty much going to be spotting them at max distances now with this piece of equipment or even just spotting very big targets that are hiding behind bushes. And they're not going to be escaping you from any more. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful piece of equipment. I've still got some more testing to do. I'm going to be signing up in some tier 10 light tanks. I've been spending a little bit too much time in the new Polish medium. But this one, I think, is a must-have for all of those kinds of vehicles where you want to be a pure scout. I'd say it's even more important than having a gun rammer on the tank. Talking about the gun rammer, let's talk about it now. The gun rammer, definitely one of the most powerful pieces of equipment in the game. Every single tank pretty much used this before there were new equipments coming into the game because why wouldn't you want to shoot 10% faster? If you can put it inside a damage slot, you're actually going to reload 11.5% faster. This works incredibly well on tanks that have very good DPM and that have great rates of fire as well. Tanks that have got great rates of fire will do very well with a gun rammer because quite often you can link two shots in before you have to pull back around the corner or, or two shots in while an enemy tank is reloading. It doesn't do quite so well for large caliber alpha damage shells and immobile tanks because I feel that they're just, they've got, they get to store up that burst potential in that initial shot. And while you want to try and slam another shell back in, quite often you have to scurry away and hide for quite a significant amount of time before you're then going to deliver that alpha damage again. So I thoroughly recommend putting gun rammers on either tanks that already have very high damage per minute or tanks that have got a very good rate of fire and want to just keep blasting at your opponents. All right, next let's talk about a very novel piece of equipment, the modified configuration. This thing is absolutely bizarre. Firstly, it goes inside a survivability slot. And if you do that, that means that you're going to just repair everything on your tank 35% faster if it gets damaged. This effectively replaces the toolkit, the toolbox. And it's even got a bond piece of equipment, I believe. If you want to spend your bonds on something like this, well, go for it. This thing is incredibly good to have on tanks that don't want to be tracked for a very long period of time. However, as I'm going to highlight in a second, there's another piece of equipment that kind of makes it a little bit redundant because you can increase the hit points of your tracks altogether at the beginning. What's powerful about this piece of equipment, however, is it basically means that you don't take damage to your ammo rack, you don't get set on fire once, it will protect you from taking that initial hit. And also, if you get damaged in the ammo rack again, or you get set on fire, then, or your engine is damaged, then it reduces the penalty of having that damage on your tank by up to 65%. So if you get ammo racked, it pretty much, in my opinion, doubles your reload. But if you were to have the 65% reduction of the double, you'd probably only lose maybe 20% of your overall rate of fire if you use this piece of equipment. So that's not even too bad. Your reload would go from 10 seconds to 12 seconds instead of going up to, I, I presume, something like 20 if you are ammo racked. So what this piece of equipment means, when you combine it with the fact that it reduces the chance for you to be set on fire from your engines and increases the durability of your fuel tank and your ammo rack and your engine altogether, I honestly think that you could take this piece of equipment and then not use a repair kit. And instead, of using a repair kit, you could use something else. You could probably use a premium consumable. You could even give up a fire extinguisher as well. In fact, best way for me to show you what I've been doing with something like the T95 is to show you how I've combined this thing with possibly one of the most bizarre loadouts ever. Yeah, can you believe not using a repair kit in the T95? I have not received a damaged engine. I have not been ammo racked. I have not had a damaged gun either and even if I did have a damage damage gun I could probably try and get my um my gunner skill up with the armorer skill if I really wanted but I don't have the best of crews so far on the T95 but that's something that I want to add I haven't had any serious damage with the T95 since I've been using the improved configuration class 1 and the fact that it improves the repair speed of the vehicle is absolutely ridiculous. And even if my engine was to be damaged, it wouldn't be the biggest of deal because of that, that the loss of the penalty. It would reduce it by 50%. It's an incredibly powerful thing to use on something like a T95 because it opens up equipment slots. However, ladies and gents, this is not cheap. I am paying 20,000 credits for each of these consumables every single game that I play if I'm buying them at full price. Or I could get them for 10,000 credits if I am buying them when they're discounted.
But this, think about it like this. This case of cola is way better than vents. It's better than bond vents. It's in fact 33% better than bond vents. So if you take an improved configuration and you don't need a fire extinguisher, but you've got the pay to win credits to be able to invest into the cola, you see what I'm thinking? You can basically replace the piece of equipment with the consumable on the tank, and while it's going to cost you more credits in the long run, your vehicle's just going to be flat out better. And the octane gasoline on a vehicle like this, while it doesn't help my turret traverse because this tank doesn't have a turret, engine power actually affects traverse speed of the vehicle. So by using the octane gasoline on this vehicle, it actually improves the traverse speed of the tank, which is absolutely incredible for being able to get at your opponents. Look at this. The case of Kohler actually improves it by 1.3%. And while it doesn't say that an increase in engine power directly affects your traverse speed in the degrees per second, I've 100% proven it on the test server. I was able to get some tanks up to pretty much half the time that it takes for them to do a full circle by just improving the engine power. I think this is something that Wargaming might have overlooked. I have the fastest T95 around right now, and it's absolutely devastating what this thing can do to be able to race into position to be able to pick apart its opponents. I've been enjoying using the modified class 1 on my tanks and while it's definitely not the cheapest way to play World of Tanks, if you're a pay to win player then you can do some really funky things with this piece of equipment. And while I definitely wouldn't recommend taking it on every vehicle you're going to play, yeah there are some situations where it can work out very well indeed. Next, let's talk about the vertical stabilizer. This is one of the best pieces of equipment in the game. Always has been, always will be. Reduces the dispersion when you turn the turret and when you move your tank. What that means is that you're going to be able to fire more accurately on the move because your reticle is never going to bloom as big. Think about the size of the reticle on the screen is dependent on your dispersion. How small the reticle gets is dependent on the accuracy of the tank and how quickly the reticle get small is dependent on the aim time of the vehicle. So if you can stop the gun from blooming out in the first place by taking the vertical stabilizer, that's why vertical stabilizers are always better than gun laying drives. And it's one of the biggest noob things that a lot of people do is using a gun laying drive instead of using a vertical stabilizer, apart from a few tanks. So if you want to know about the dispersion values of your vehicles, you're not actually going to be able to find them inside the game. You're going to have to go on something like Tanks GG. So for example, let's look at some tier 10 light tanks. Let's look at the Manticore, for example. We can see the dispersion of the tank is 0.16 when moving and 0.08 when turning the turret. If we look at something like the T100LT, for example, look, it's 0.06 when moving and it's 0.05 when turning the turret. What this means is that the T100LT's reticle is going to not get as big when the vehicle is moving, and so it's going to be far more accurate at firing on the move than the Manticore is. And so, sorry, I had my outlook open. <laughs> I'll close that in a second. Ah, okay, focus. What I'm trying to say is that there's not much point of using a vertical stabilizer on the T100LT because it is already accurate enough as it is while moving. However, the Manticore, if you want to be accurate while you're moving, it's definitely worth invest investing the vertical stabilizers because it'd be better to have a 25% dispersion reduction on 0.16 than it would be on 0.06. And so for the T100LT, I would definitely not use vertical stabilizers, but for the Manticore, I would. And as a rule of thumb, if a tank can use vertical stabilizers, you should use vertical stabilizers. Next up, let's talk about the improved rotation mechanism. So this is a new version of a vertical stabilizer. It actually does half of the effectiveness of a bond vertical stabilizer. At the moment, considering there's no bounty improved rotation mechanism class one, and there's no bond version of in improved rotation mechanism class one, I think this thing is rather underpowered, apart from in certain, certain situations. What I'm trying to hint at is that when it comes to vertical stabilizers, 
you actually have the ability to get bond equipment that will reduce the dispersion by, I think it's up to 25%. Actually, it's, it's even better. Look at the disparity between the different pieces of equipment. Your bond vertical stabilizers do 27.5%. That's absolutely ridiculous compared to a regular vertical stabilizer, which will only do 20%. Why is the bond equipment nearly 50% better? Oh, oh well. Whatever, that's just the way that World of Tanks is going in some ways. So, if you can afford the Bond piece of equipment for your top tier tanks, why would you want to use the new piece of equipment, the improved rotation mechanism, which only does, even if you put it in a firepower or a mobility slot, 12.5%, when you could have 27.5% with the Bond piece of equipment and you could put it in whatever slot you wanted. However, the improved rotation mechanism class 1 does actually help the vehicle's traverse speed. As you can see here, you can manage to turn the vehicle faster as well as also getting that reduced dispersion when moving and reduced dispersion when using the turret. I think the most powerful piece of... I think the most powerful tanks that can use this piece of equipment are vehicles like the self-propelled guns and certain tank destroyers that can't use vertical stabilizers to begin with. And so, when I think about the most powerful self-propelled gun in the game, I'm thinking about the M5355. Can I now use... Oh, I can. That's disgusting. Okay, I could use an improved rotation mechanism on this tank. That will be incredibly powerful. And also, maybe, possibly, on one of the biggest, most derpy tanks in the game with terrible turret traverse... Yes, look, you can put improved rotation mechanism on the FV4005 as well. That is a definite module that I would use on these tanks instead of using a gun laying drive. Well, a gun laying drive is great, and I would probably try to squeeze on this vehicle as well as the gun rammer, but then you'd have to drop vents. In the end, it's all going to be up to you. There are some certain case examples where this piece of equipment is good, but all in all, I think, as a rule of thumb, I wouldn't invest heavily into these. I think the vertical stabilizers are still going to be the one that you should use. Next up, let's talk about improved aiming. This piece of a module um, reduces the aiming circle size by 5% or 7%, i.e. it just increases the accuracy of the tank. I think this is probably one of the, the weaker modules in the game. Um, I don't think you can put this on artillery. If you could put it on artillery, it would be quite powerful. I guess you might want to use this on certain very inaccurate tanks or alternatively on certain tanks that are already very accurate that you want to be just absolutely pixel sniping. And so if you love to sit at the back of the map and you are a sniper through and through, then maybe you should use this piece of equipment. But ladies and gents, there's one thing that I'd like to highlight, and that is that you could just use vents and vents will actually help with the aiming time on this tank anyway. If I go on my Stritzwang 103B for example and I go over the accuracy attribute here, we can see that the improved ventilation and the brothers in arms and the coffee with cinnamon buns is actually improving the accuracy of the tank. Not quite as much as you would do with the with the with the improved accuracy equipment can't even remember the name of it. it for me it's that's how much interest i have in it personally but i want to try and make sure i'm explaining all of these pieces of equipment as well however the idea for me of sacrificing vents which make everything about your tank better to make just your accuracy a tiny little bit better seems like an absolute fallacy and i think this is one of the weakest pieces of equipment and i uh well there will be some snipers out there who will still use it. I think it's it's definitely one that I would avoid. Next, let's talk about the spore liner. So the spore liner is very useful for when you want to give up a med kit. I think that is really what you have to do with a spore liner. If you choose to use a spore liner on your tank, you should drop the med kit and just take the chance that you're going to you're going to lose a crew. Maybe possibly, maybe it will happen. Maybe you could take the uh, jack of all trades skill on your commander, which means that if one of your other crew members die, that you reduce the penalty of having that crew member knocked out in battle without a med kit to be able to heal them. I love this module for reducing the amount of damage that artillery and high explosive shells deal to my tank. I like using this piece of equipment for the Jagdpanzer E100, for example, or my mouse, and then I drop the medkit altogether. And even if I get hit by artillery, then I'm reducing the stun duration if I put it in one of my survivability slots on my mouse, for example, by 15%. 
which is absolutely awesome. And the additional stun duration by 25%. But really, it's the protection of the crew from injuries by 60% on your super heavy tanks that just allows you to use another piece of equipment. Maybe you could use some fuel to make your tank faster or make your turret turn quicker and your hull turn quicker as well, actually, because that's the way the engine power works in the game. Or alternatively, you could use a fire extinguisher in addition to a premium consumable and a repair kit, which is probably very important in something like a mouse. All in all, I think the super heavy spool liner is good, but I would never use a heavy, a medium or a light spool liner. I think there are far better pieces of equipment for you to use on your vehicles. Remember that you shouldn't just slap a super heavy spool liner on your mouse without thinking about how you're going to use it. Make sure you're getting an advantage from either using a premium consumable, uh, like a premium food consumable, a repair kit, and maybe even a fire extinguisher well on the vehicle, and you're dropping that med kit. Otherwise, you're really not getting much of the benefit from the module. Now let's talk about the binocular telescope. Still one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful piece of equipment in the game for mid and lower tier tanks. If I cannot get 445 meters view range, I will always use a binocular telescope. I'll never use coated optics. Um, this is on my free to play account, for example. I was even using binocular telescopes on tanks that had 370 meters base view range with a fairly decent crew. I think the only time I would use a coated optics if I was a free to play player and I didn't have a premium consumable on the tank, which will increase your view range by 5% because of the 10% crew skill, is I, w I think the base view range that a tank would require minimum 380, if not 390 to use coated optics. Apart from that, I would use binocular telescopes. They're just so darn powerful. And in fact, on all of my tank destroyers, I love using this module because I play a very vision-based version of World of Tanks where I'm trying to outspot my opponents because if I can see them and they can't see me, then I can make plays around that. I can either shoot them or I can relocate. Uh, it's very important for me to control the vision of the battle or even to just spot for my uh, my allies. Which is why I think the binocular telescope is of utmost importance on all of your tanks. And I would use this module if you are not reaching 440 or at least 450 meters view range with coated optics. And also, just quickly, I wanted to dispel one of the biggest misconceptions about World of Tanks. And that is that people think that you cannot extend your view range beyond 445. 445 meters is the maximum spotting distance in World of Tanks. You can tell with the ring on your minimap. And if you're still wondering what are you talking about rings on my minimap and you do don't know from my videos, go and watch my World of Tanks settings guide after you've watched this video. It will be literally the best 10 to 15 minutes you could spend to improve your World of Tanks game. So 445 meters is the maximum spotting distance. However, remember any view range you have beyond that will counter the camo. A lot like what we were when I was talking about the commander's vision system. So if the enemy has 50% camo and you have 600 meters view range, you're only going to see them at 300 meters. That's why it's important to go above and beyond 445 so you can see tanks that aren't the FV4005, that aren't the mouse at maximum distances. Okay, so now let's talk about coated optics. I think, obviously, this is a fantastic piece of equipment, and I would use it on dynamic vehicles, not tank destroyers. Maybe some tank destroyers that have exceptional base view range of 390, maybe even 400, but those tank destroyers are few and far between. Most tank destroyers need to use binocular telescope. On my light tanks and vehicles with about 390 base view range and more, or maybe 370 base view range and more if you're a premium consumable user and you're using food on all of your tanks, use coated optics. It'll be better. You'll be able to spot on the move. You won't have to sit still to be able to activate your binocular telescope. And you'll be able to be more dynamic, especially when it comes to using bushes to be able to pull back behind them and shoot your opponents. It will be massive for you. Next, let's talk about the camera net. I honestly think this is going to be a bit controversial. Some of you out there are probably not going to like this opinion, but whatever, it's my opinion. I think this is a trash module. Absolute garbage. I hate the camouflage net. And do you know why? Because... There are nets all over the battlefield. Every single bush is a camouflage net waiting for you to just pop in it and use it. Sure, I guess there are some players out there who would like to use a, a camouflage net to just create the bush wherever they want. But honestly, now there are better pieces of equipment for you to use. 
The only kinds of tanks that I would recommend to use a camouflage net on are possibly the Swedish TDs because they can keep turning their tank while keeping the, the camouflage net and your binoculars activated. Or something like an E25. The E25 is a very special tank. It has broken camera rating. I don't have time to go into it here, otherwise this video is going to be, end up being an hour long. But the bottom line is that the E25 loses less camo after firing because it's a premium tank before the camo rating nerf on all tank destroyers. But more importantly, because it has a small caliber gun, and small caliber guns actually mean that tanks lose less camo after firing. Go on your charioteer, for example. If you fire with the charioteer with the 105, you'll actually lose way more camo than you would do if you're using the 20 pounder on the tank. I'm not suggesting that you should use the 20 pounder just so you have less camo after firing. You're still most likely going to get spotted because the, the change is minute. But it's definitely something you could check out yourself. So these kinds of tanks, which have an impressive camo rating after firing, can actually really benefit from a camouflage net because the camouflage net will... Uh, well, your firing will it's the base value so it will mean that you gain a lot more camo while you're firing on a tank like the E25 and if you actually max out something like the E25 while you're firing which is the only use in my opinion for the concealment net then you are going to have about 25% camo when you're firing and all of those puppies aren't going to spot you which is why the E25 is just absolutely crazy OP. Um, and it's still one of my most recommended tanks for all of you SEAL clubbers out there, if you know what you're doing. Okay, so now let's talk about improved ventilation. The all-round jack-of-all-trades piece of equipment that is usable on every single tank. And is, well, apart from tanks that don't have a roof, because they have all of the ventilation they need, right? Kind of a disadvantage to, to have tanks like that. But it's also a piece of equipment that can go in every single slot. It can go in survivability, scouting, firepower, and mobility. And if you put it in that slot, you're going to have 6% crew skills, which is nice. But really, um, one of the most overpowered things about Bond equipment is the improved venting system. Look at this thing. 8.5%. Wargaming, what were you thinking? Why are you rewarding the best players who play tier 10 and have bonds and play ranked and play clan wars and have access bo excess bonds to be able to spend on their equipment to literally just make them better than everybody else with regards to their crew skills? Yeah, I'm just really happy that you can't actually buy bonds. But then again, when I think about it, considering that you do get small amounts of bonds, I believe, for having a premium account each day day yeah you kind of do oh dear let's not go there anyway um you can't exactly buy pieces of equipment but in the long run having that premium account is going to give you an advantage when it comes to bonds so my point is that the bond vent at eight and a half percent is probably the best piece of equipment if i could have infinite bonds i would put bond vents on every single one of my tanks most overpowered piece of equipment in the game however if you don't have bounty equipment, you don't have bond equipment, and you can only afford the regular ventilation, they're still great. They're still great for the vast majority of situations, but if you're absolutely min-maxing your tank, the first piece of equipment that I would recommend getting is that bond equipment. The improved ventilation is just, uh, if you put it in the correct slot, and considering every single tank has an access to one, is just a 3% buff to everything about your tank. Why wouldn't you want to be 3% better? It baffles me how many people take gun laying drives instead of taking the improved ventilation. I, I hope they realize that the, the vents are doing the 3% of the gun laying drives effect anyway. It's like that with coated optics as well. With certain tier 10 tanks, ones that I have incredibly good crews with, and also tanks that have incredibly good base view range like the M48, I will actually use vents instead of using... Um, another module. I, I will use my vents, especially now that you can put it in every single slot. Look at this. I'm literally just going to click to put the vents over here. Now the vents are going to be 6%. That's so much better than taking coated optics. Look at what kind of view range I can get up to with my M48 with, fair enough, my fully tricked out crew. I've got recon, brothers in arms, situational awareness, and I'm using a premium consumable. Look at that. We're getting up to 488 meters view range without using 
coated optics, but because we're using the vents, everything else about our tank is better. Look at what it does to our DPM. It adds just an extra 89. That's 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 significant. That means you reload before your opponent, even if they are using a gun rammer, because you're going to be using one too. So in quite a lot of my tanks, if I'm using premium consumables at tier 10 and I have a fully tricked out crew, I will drop coated optics and use vents because vents are just that powerful. Why wouldn't you want to make your tank 3% better at everything? Because that's the way that crew skills scale. Every 2% of crew skill is 1% performance on your vehicle. Next, let's talk about additional grousers. What do I think about these things? Well, they're actually pretty okay for vehicles for maintaining speed. I think the maintaining speed will probably help when you're turning. Um, you do lose quite a lot of speed when you're turning. Um, and it could be good with clutch braking and off-road driving, as they're saying. Um, it also says that it's considerably effective when driving on soft and moderately soft terrain. I guess the tank... I guess it doesn't actually improve your ground resistances. But the maintaining speed, when you drive on soft terrain, you lose a lot more speed. So if you used additional grousers on certain maps on Clan Wars... You could actually be able to push through some really tricky situations. Like, for example, the the valley on Lakeville. You know, everybody who turns right or turns left, depending on whether you spawn north or south, and just grinds through the valley, everybody gets slowed down so much. With these grousers, you'd actually be able to get through there quicker and be able to traverse the vehicle faster as well, turning left and right. But all in all, it's a trash module and I would never recommend using it. You know I'm scraping the barrel when I'm trying to find specific game modes and specific maps and specific tactics to recommend using this. 10 out of 10 would not recommend them. I think they're a trash module. Next, let's talk about the enhanced gun lane drive. I think that an enhanced gun lane drive is okay on artillery, especially artillery that can't use vents. I think it's okay on certain tanks that have really bad aim time. We're talking about three and a half or four seconds aim time here. But for the most part, considering that turreted tanks now have the competition of either being able to use the, the vertical stabilizer or even turreted tank destroyers being able to use the improved rotation mechanism, I think the gun lane drive is probably one of the worst choices, at least in my opinion. Remember that the a gun lane drive reducing your aim time, it will take three times the aim time of your vehicle to be able to fully aim the shot. A lot of people think it's the actual value, but from what I read on the What Wiki page, it is uh, your aim time of your tank is the amount that it will take to reduce it by a third. So it'll actually take, let's say your aim time is two seconds, it's going to take six seconds before you fully aim the shot. If your aim time is four seconds, it's going to take 12 seconds before you fully aim the shot. So for those kind of tanks, the gun lane drive might be useful, but again, you're sacrificing so many important modules, I could just probably never recommend it. Next, let's talk about the low noise exhaust system. This is something that just improves the camera rating of your vehicle. Now on certain tanks, like your light tanks, especially ones with incredibly good camera rating like the ELC EVA 90, I think it could be quite hilarious to use this piece of equipment just to get what I would call hyper camera rating. I also think that it would be quite good to use on very large light tanks that you want to try and play as scouts. Because remember, this is like a, an absolute value. So if you've got 50, it will add 8 on a light tank. Whereas if you've got 10, it will add 8 to up to 18, which would be absolutely incredible. You'd increase the camera rating of a 10% light tank by 80%, which is massive. This could also be very good module to use on a tank which has um, no concealment crew yet. Maybe it's a fresh tank and you just want to whack one on and then you'll spend 10 gold or a demounting kit to take it off. It could make up for a very bad crew. However, I still think, again, I'm scraping the barrel. There are very few uh, tanks that I would actually recommend using this piece of equipment on, and I would thoroughly recommend to use something else. Vents would actually improve your camera rating by a significant amount. Uh, you know, you're maximizing your view range, hopefully with coated optics as well. Do you want to fire faster, use a gun rammer? There's so many pieces of equipment that are probably better. Next, let's talk about something that has made me hemorrhage millions of credits over the last week. It's the turbocharger. This thing is absolutely wild. I think it's overpowered. I think it's I think it's absolutely crazy. And I've been putting it on all of the vehicles that I've been actively playing. SDB1, CS63, T95, Progetto. Those have been the five most played tanks over my last week. Because the Polish tank is new, the SDB1 is incredible with its 
reverse speed with this, and the T95 is hilarious, and I've been doing really well with that kind of funky setup and trying to make it the zoom turtle, right? So the turbocharger class 1. It will improve your top speed by 4 kilometers an hour or 5 in a mobility slot. And it will improve your reverse speed by 2 or 3 in a mobility slot backwards. That's incredible. But here's the real kicker. It improves your engine power by 10% if it's in a mobility slot. That is massive. It's absolutely massive. That means that you will be able to get up to speed. You'll accelerate faster. But more importantly, you will be able to maintain your speed up slope at a higher level. And importantly as well, and this is something that I proved on the test server, unless Wargaming have changed it since then, but I'm 99% sure that they haven't. Engine power affects traverse speed. So the idea of using the improved grousers to improve the traverse speed of your tank instead of using a premium consumable uh, or like, you know, the, the fuel on the vehicle or using that turbocharger is absolutely ridiculous. I would recommend putting turbochargers on pretty much every single tank that you can that you can feel you can get away without using coated optics and you feel you can get away without using um, you can you get a, get away without using vertical stabilizers. So for example the CS63 this is definitely a tank that I would rather use vertical stabilizers on but over the last week I've played this vehicle 54 times. Yeah, I've been playing this this tank a lot. I've won 74% of my game solo over those 54 battles by using the mobility of the tank combined with the turbocharger to race into position. This tank can go at 75 forwards, 23 backwards, and when you leave the turbo mode, it can now go at 60 forwards and 18 backwards instead of the 55-15. It's an incredible module. I think on every single medium tank, I am going to be using this. I think it's probably even more important than having view range because you can just control the battlefield. Honestly, though, I will come out and say that I think that this piece of equipment is pay to win because I use premium consumables on my main account. I'm using my bread with smallets on my Polish tier 10 medium tank. This improves my view range by, look at this, 20 meters. 20 meters and because i'm using my bounty vents on this tank that's also improving my view range by 16 meters that's huge and because i have a fully decked out crew with brothers in arms recon situational awareness you know the whole caboodle that actually means that i can drop coated optics on this tank and i can use the turbocharger instead and that is amazingly powerful boys and girls and that is a pay to win luxury you can only really afford to do that if you have a premium account you have premium tanks and you're, you're kind of okay at the game and you've got your credit boosters and you know how to go and make millions of credits in your premium tanks by activating them and playing well it is allowing me to be able to do things in the game that frankly you shouldn't be able to do i'm I'm just too fast. I'm faster than everybody else. I can control the engagement, but I've still managed to pump up my view range to a point where I'm just as good as the free-to-play tier 10 medium tanks. It's, it's ludicrous, really. Um, Wargaming, with the new pieces of equipment, if you have credits, you can do some wild things with the vehicles. And I'm not really thinking about sustainability on this account. I'm just thinking about maximum performance. I've got my free-to-play account for a reason. I played ranked last season, I didn't fire a single gold round, and I didn't use a single premium consumable, and I was still able to get 100% chevron gain. On my main account, though, I used everything, all of my tricks and advantages, and I was able to get more like 150 to 160% chevron gain. Hmm, yeah. I digress. Let me focus on what's at hand, and that is that I thoroughly think that the turbocharger is absolutely god tier on a medium tank. And it's also very good on incredibly slow tanks. Think about a mouse. A mouse that can go at 24 forwards and a mouse that can go at 17 backwards. Woof! Including having better traverse speed and better engine power to be able to get up those slopes and maintain that speed. It's ridiculously powerful, boys and girls. The turbocharger, if you're a pay-to-win player, is a luxury that you can afford. But all of the free-to-play players out there... I don't think you can afford to use turbochargers on your tank. How can you give up vertical stabilizers? How can you give up coated optics? How can you give up the, the gun rammer? How can you give up vents on the tank to be able to use a turbocharger? I think that all of those modules, especially the coated optics and the vert stabs, are things that you can only give up when you have incredibly good crew skills and you are using premium consumables. So the turbocharger, give it a go. See what you think. So now let's talk about the, the final 
piece of equipment, improved hardening class one. So this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment on certain tanks. Look at what this does. Firstly, improved hit points. It's useful, it's useful, no doubt, but it's definitely not the real reason why you use this piece of equipment. Suspension durability. Oh yes, this is what I'm talking about. If you put this in a survivability slot, you have 65% improved track health. It's absolutely wild. That means that your opponents often have to shoot you twice in the tracks. They can't stop you as you come around the corner. It's completely crazy. Add this to the fact that also you improve your suspension faster up to 20% in a slot. And you've also got an improved load capacity on the vehicle so you can not have to get... Um, you, you don't have to upgrade the tracks on the tank first. You could put this piece of equipment on your vehicle, an incredibly good starting piece of equipment on your tank. You're going to have better tracks. It doesn't matter if you have a bad repair crew, for example. It doesn't matter that you haven't got the tracks on the tank. Skip the tracks. Go for the engine. Go for the turret. Go for the gun. Go for the things that really matter, not the tracks that you just have to put on the tank to be able to get everything else. And bam, you're automatically in the game. I wish I'd had these on my free-to-play account while I was grinding up some of my tanks. I would have put them on as the first module. I would have then just invested in getting the most important modules on the tank, not the tracks. And it wouldn't have mattered if I didn't have a repair crew. I could have put a fresh crew on the tank. And I wouldn't have been had my tracks being taken off many times. And then I could get the repair kit. And even if they do get taken off, then I've got an improved suspension repair speed anyway. But here's the real kicker. It actually has a special bonus, an effect. Something that no other piece of equipment, I believe, has um, got currently. But it suggests that Wargaming might... Actually, no, it does. It does. Remember the one that stops you from getting Amarak? The one that stops you from getting set on fire once? Yeah, so th there is that. But this is the one that really you notice in the battle. And that is that after you repair the tracks naturally... We're not talking about using a repair kit. Because if you use a repair kit, it fully restores the health of the tracks anyway. When you restore the the tracks naturally with your crew they go back to full durability it's amazing what you can do with this piece of equipment with a t95 so your opponent just wasted two shots into your tracks to lock you in place now tries to get your side bam you're back up again faster than you would have been without this piece of equipment and then your tracks are fully healthed up so they have to shoot you again twice in the tracks to be able to take them off i'm laughing because i have the t95 I wouldn't be laughing when I'm fighting T95s and all of you, you World of Tanks community, use all of the tips and tricks that I've been teaching you in this video to then go and set up your T95 in a way that can't be tracked as well. I honestly think that the T95 is crazy overpowered, set up in the correct way, and this piece of equipment is one of my favorites of the new pieces. And I can't, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about other tanks that I could do uh, with this. Maybe a Tortoise, maybe a Jagdpanzer. Things where you just want to come around the corner and you want to laugh at your opponents and then just keep the ball rolling. But none more than the T95. Perfect tank to use this piece of equipment on. I wouldn't recommend using this on everything. Probably your stock tanks with stock crews and certain vehicles that you absolutely, utterly can't afford to get tracked in. And let's be honest, the T95 is one of those tanks. The T95 is absolutely awful if you get tracked, and it's got bigger tracks than... It's got tracks that seem to absorb every single shell, right? Perfect tank. So any of your vehicles that get tracked a lot, consider that this piece of equipment also means that you can drop a repair kit. Yeah, that's right. I don't use a fire extinguisher because I'm using the enhanced modified configuration, and I don't even use a repair kit on the T95 because I'm using the improved hardening. How absolutely wild is the T95 using all three of these new pieces of equipment to do things in this tank that otherwise I would have never been able to do. And so, ladies and gents, boys and girls, how long was that? Did I just talk for 45 minutes and pretty much I didn't make any mistakes or I, this is going to be the easiest video to edit ever. I might not even edit out the outlook moment. Goodness gracious. I know my stuff, right? I know my stuff. I know my tanks, boys and girls. We know our equipment as well. Um, hopefully this video was useful. If it was, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. But if you hated it, make sure you give the video a thumbs down. Um, yeah, I, I just hope that you are now more informed about equipment than ever. Oh, no, I know this is probably not the way that you wanted to spend the first 30, 40 minutes of your Friday. But congratulations if you did it. 
You did your homework. You are now a better World of Tanks player. Go forth and use this knowledge to smash your opponents on the battlefield. And Wargaming. While, I'd, I'd like to deliver a couple of pieces of feedback at the end. Number one, Wargaming. Equipment sale, now. Stop fleecing us, please, come on. Let us use all of the new pieces of equipment that you put in the game. Surely that's the reason why you put them in in the first place. And secondly, Wargaming, you must be incredibly careful about what you are doing with the game right now. You have just sped up every single tank with the turbocharger. You have just increased everybody's availability to hit points. You've made it so that now tanks can't even really be tracked for more than a couple of seconds. And they can't be set on fire and they can't be ammo racked. Wargaming, please, please, please be considerate about the impact that your equipment has on certain vehicles. And how you're going to address that with the inevitable overpowered nature. There's just a random girl's head in the way of the T95. That's better. The random overpowered nature of certain tanks. I can tell you that this one is benefiting a lot from the new equipment, whereas certain vehicles, like a lot of my medium tanks, I guess they've got a buff to the turbocharger, but a lot of vehicles, like your heavy tanks, the new pieces of equipment really aren't for them. Anyway, that's it. Have a lovely weekend, whatever you get up to, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I will be back with another video on Sunday. Catch you soon.